Hey guys, in this video we'll be continuing with the uh, Python video tutorials. I'll be going over uh, value returning functions. So value returning functions in Python return a value. Uh, so you can print a value, point a value, uh, point a variable to it. Uh, what else can you do? Put it in an expression. Uh, all kinds of things. So we'll go over a few ways to use it or use them. So I'll show you how to do it. We just need to use the return statement. I think I've done it once or twice, but we'll go over here. So we have uh, a def main. Uh, then here we'll have so we'll just have a uh, age one points to Int cast it to input the input function, then we'll ask for a string. We'll say enter your age. So it'll just be some kind of form or something. Enter your age. Uh, we'll, th we'll put a new line here. And here we'll have uh, age two. Points to int, the same thing, so cast it to uh, the input function. And we'll just say enter your age again. Or enter uh, first age. Enter second age, then we'll put a new line here. And here we'll have a uh, total age points to. So here we're going to call a function uh, sum or get age. Or get ages, and then we'll have uh, age one. We'll pass in age one, and then age two. As parameters, first parameter, second parameter. Uh, after that. So the sum will get our age. Uh, we probably could have just could just write it now because we want a total age. We want this to get age, so we can come back here. So here we'll just say uh, define get ages. We'll just say that it takes a val one and a val two. So here we can have ages points to, so it's some kind of variable ages can hold whatever. We'll have it hold ints in this case, so we'll have we could just have age one and age two here to be honest. But we'll just uh Yeah we could do that. So we'll just have an age one here and have an age two here. So just keep the the variables the same. We'll say ages points to uh, age one plus age two, so it's just going to sum the values. And here at the end, so how to do a value returning function? All we have to do is type the return keyword, so it's built into Python and pretty much any other language, Java, C. They all have a return statement, which makes it a uh, makes it handy so we'll have return here and we'll just return the value ages when we're done no semicolon so we'll just return ages here 
So after we have the function get ages, it's going to calculate. Well, here it's going to pass in age one and age two, like we're passing here. H1, H2. Then here we're saying, okay, well, ages points to this value to the sum and then return the sum. So that's what we want. So, of course, we want uh, the function to return. Want the function to return uh, the ages. So after that, uh, we will go back to where we stopped writing that function. Or sorry, yeah, we're basically basically where we stopped main here. I just jump back in. It's up to you what you guys want to do. Sometimes I do that, or I work from the bottom up. But pretty much that works fine. Sometimes we'll write the get ages first and work back up. If I'm copying a code out that someone already wrote, I'll do that. I'll start from the bottom. If there's a bunch of secondary functions like get getters and setters, I'll do those. I'll do the last functions first and work back up. That's how it helps me learn better. If you go down, you have to figure out what they are after. So it doesn't really help. It's not really that helpful. Uh, if I'm writing something from scratch, I'll do this. I'll start main, I'll write what I have, or what I need, and then if I come to a place where I decide I want to write a function, then I'll I'll write it like this, and then I'll jump into the function, and then I'll come back. So that works for me, whatever you guys think is best for you. So here I'll say uh, where we were. We have total age points to get age, now we can get rid of the comment. Right. And here we'll just go under that. So here we can just, we're pretty much done, so we can just say have a print. We can have a print statement, uh, the ages. Sum is. Or we could just say that total age is. The total ages are. Uh, we can have the total ages are, and then pass in total age. Or we could have even done is we could have just got get age right here instead of doing this. Uh, yeah, okay, so I'll, I'll show that here. What happened to my zoom in? Oh, that's as far as it goes, really? No, really? Doesn't get any bigger than that? That's interesting. All right. I swear we got it bigger before, but that's okay. Okay, so we have uh, so we have we can we can show what's happening here. Uh, we don't really need to, but we can do a quick run through. So I'll just save that. Click the debug icon. Sorry, I didn't call main. Alright, so after that, uh, of course, we'll just call main. I'll just get out of the indentation, call main. Click the debug icon after I save it. Control S. Alright, so we do have... Okay, so we do have a... I uh, forgot the breakpoint here, too. Okay, so I'll put a breakpoint here. Third time's a charm. All right, so here we go. So we have uh, we have our main function call. We're gonna step in. So age one points to. I'm gonna step over it. Then I'm gonna enter a value. So age one points to input. Enter first age. We'll just say my my first age here is like 20. I'll hit enter. Age two. Uh, I'll step over. So I'll click the. I'll click, I'll click the uh, variables 
and then we have I'll click the debug console or the debugger button instead of sets a debugger and then here I'll have age one uh, points to 20 so it's an int then so that's what we have so far click on the console I'll uh, so whoops I'll step over click on the console enter second age I'll say uh, 28 hit enter so I'll have total age points to get ages so now we have our two variables 20 and 28 so now we have so we have uh, two variables then here we're going to create a third one so it's going to be total age points to so that total age is going to wait uh, wait to point to uh, the so this is a value returning function get ages takes two parameters so we have get ages is going to return two value uh, sorry it's going to return one value with two parameters and it's, and it's going to be saved in the total age variable so I'm going to step into that now so now we're in another thread I think here which is going to be the other function which is get ages as you can see 20 and 28 got passed they're ints they got passed as parameters uh, now ages is, is going this new variable ages is going to point to the the age one plus age two. So we'll step over, we have another variable in our variables. So that should give us a value of 48. Then we'll once I click, once I step over, return ages. We'll see that. Actually, you can't see it. But basically, if I step over total age, it'll be saved. So as you can see, we have uh, total age points to 48. So the val so a total age now is storing the value returned from that function in total age. The total age is now storing it in a memory location in hex code, and it's referenced by the the name total age. Now we're here. We're going to print the total ages are, and it's going to print total age to our console. The total ages are 48. So whatever that was supposed to mean, you guys get the idea. So that's it. That's the end of the function. So we'll go to the next example now. So value returning functions are pretty easy, as you can see. There's nothing too complicated about them. Sometimes don't make them too complicated. Sometimes they can be they can seem tricky, but they're not. Like sometimes they return a string, sometimes you can return an int or a float character. Well, I guess not a character in Python. You can return one letter of a string. You can return probably object types, which we'll go over later on. You can basically return a value. So that's all it is. Don't make it too complicated. It's not. It just returns a value. That's it. And you can use that value straight up like as we did here. The total age is, oh, sorry, it's for total age. Uh, oh yeah, there's one thing we can do with this as well. So I'll show you. So as we as we said, we have total age points to get ages. So we have this function call here, right? We didn't even need that, I don't think. So we could just go. We can call get ages right here. So we can pass a function into a print statement like that too. Enter first age 20, second age 28. Oh, whoops, sorry, forgot the uh, parameters here. So we'll just have age uh, 1, comma, age 2. So you just pass in the parameters, same idea, just as we did before, like a normal function call. This one, so the get ages takes two parameters. Therefore, in the function call, we have to enter two parameters, which we just did. Oops, I don't want to debug it. Don't want two windows either. Why is that all the way up there? Okay, so enter, enter first age here. We'll enter uh, 20. Enter second age here. I'll enter 28. The total ages are 48. So as you can see, what we did there, we can use it in another function. So we can have a function call it another function. So you know what I mean. So you can play you can play around with it 
it just depends trial and error it so you try it see if it works if it doesn't try something else that's the best thing to do so now here we'll just have another example All right, so we'll just we'll just have another example here. So we'll go with uh, I have another example. Uh, this is we'll have to delete this code here. So this will be a sale, uh, kind of maybe a grocery store example or something again. So we'll have a constant here. Discount. Percentage. So we have discount percentage. is going to be uh, it's going to be like 0 0.15 so it's going to be a constant so then we'll have here def main again the reason why it's pretty much a constant is that we can't change the value unless we use a global you still can it's just that uh, yeah you still can unless we use the keyword global So that's as good as it gets. Uh, here we'll have so def main. We'll just put reg price. We can put regular price. Regular price points to a function here. A get regular price, which is it isn't going to know what it is. So we'll say we'll put a comment get regular price. So when that happens, then we'll go down to the uh, to the actual function here. All right, so we have uh, get regular price at the bottom here. We'll come back to where we were, so we'll have here def get regular price. We'll define a function. Getters usually don't take parameters, but they can though. It's up usually not. Uh, we c if, if if it takes parameters, usually it's a setter. So I may have messed that up. I'm not messed it up, but just generally it may have been it's usually supposed to be a setter if it takes parameters getters just kind of get variables but not all the time just most of the time so just it just just depends so we have a uh, get the regular price here we'll say Price points to cast it float to the input function. Enter the original price. We'll throw a new line in here. Then here we can just return the price. So we have here regular price points to get regular price. Now we can move down. That works. See, see what I did? We created the function and came back. Uh, instead of doing it and then trying to figure it out later, works fine that way for me.
So it, it may work uh, that way well for you guys, it just depends. So now we'll just uh, say, sorry, I lost my spot in my code here. So we have uh, get the regular price. Uh, we had regular price points to the getter. Then now we'll have uh, we'll have a sale price here or a sale yes yeah, sales sale price points to regular price minus we can have a function. discount price which will well right now it's not going to know what it is so we'll just comment it out so we pass we can pass the regular price in here again so we can go below this function and say def get discount price So we define a function here, we're going to make it a getter, we'll get the discount price. So we'll say we'll say that the discount takes a regular price again. And here we'll say, what we can do here is we can switch it up. We can say return, you can throw it in a return statement. So you can say actually return a regular price again times discount price. Or do we say discount percentage? Discount, yeah, discount percentage. So it's going to, so when you multiply something by zero, a little less than 1.0, it gives you a fraction of the value. So we'll do that. So what we so what we're doing uh, what we're doing here is we're taking the regular price. So we're saying we want to return an expression, basically a math expression, returning a pretty much a math expression. Return regular price times discount price. So you can do that too. You can return a variable, or you can return some kind of expression, or you can return null probably, and uh, not always, but wouldn't be a good idea to return null but if you have like a default case where something didn't work you can return null uh, we'll go over that later uh, that'll be more advanced but we'll be doing it pretty soon so we'll, I'll show you guys so then after we do that so get uh, def yeah, sorry, yeah so we have get discount price we're passing in the regular price return regular price times discount percentage that now we'll go back to where we were. So we're at sale. Sale price points to regular price times discount passing in regular price. That should be fine now. Uh, no. That should be like that. Get discount price. I don't like this color scheme here. The uh, Pytrum didn't do a good job of this color scheme. These should have been different colors. Uh, regular price should have been a different color than this function call. Because you can't tell when you look at it. You can change these though somehow. Uh, there might be a better theme out there. But yeah, that doesn't look too good. It's okay, I mean, it just looks like normal text. Not that great though, I mean, you can't distinguish them if you're looking at it quickly. That's why you do these, you, you have the colors to distinguish things. So you go like, okay, this orange color is a keyword, yellow is a function, blue is variables, blue maybe other kinds of functions, or yeah, so yellow could be like user-defined functions, blue could be like variables and user, or uh, uh, variables and 
built-in functions or something, but the color scheme's getting messed up here. It's showing a variable and a, a user-defined function as the same. If they had another color, at least here would have been better, but not that great. Anyways, here now we have a... Uh, so we'll just print our data here, so we'll say print. The sale price is... So we'll have a dollar sign. For a format, then we'll have a quote. So we'll end the string here. Put a comma and then we'll call the format function. And we'll pass in sale price. We'll have a comma. Then a string uh, format here. Uh, that, oh, that was wrong, wasn't it? Sale price, comma, inside the bracket, we'll have comma dot 2f. That's it. So that should be all. So we have print the sale prices with the format. That should be all, and then at the end we could just call main. It's fine like that. You can have spaces if you really want. But sometimes I just keep it together so we can see the debugger and stuff as well on one screen with the rest of the data. So we'll have that. Uh, do we need really need to walk through it? Probably not. We could just do a quick walk through here, so we have, we start here, we start in main, so we move to the main definition, as usual, we have our variable here, points to get regular price. We then move into get regular price. Price, so enter the original price. Price points there, return the price. The regular price now points to the price. We could have just named this regular price as well probably. Uh, then after that does the same thing with sales price. Takes our regular price from before, which was saved, minus get discount price, so get discount price, so it jumps into get discount price, passes in regular price as a parameter. So now we're in get discount price, passes regular price, so it returns here regular price, which, it, which was passed times the discount, which gives us a value returns that saves it to sale price, then it prints out the sales prices, print the sale price. So hopefully you guys understand, so here we'll have enter the original price. Let's just say it was $20, so we'd enter. The sales price is $17. So there you go, there's your introduction to value returning functions. Uh, we'll probably be continuing this to return strings and booleans uh, after in the next video. Maybe a few more examples. So hope that so hope that helps. Uh, if you guys like the video, you can give me a thumbs up at, to support the channel and subscribe if you'd like uh, for more programming videos, uh, coding, investing stuff. Uh, more languages will be coming out soon. So I'll see you guys. Thanks for watching and take care.